America first. That includes a promise to cancel billions in climate change spending. Our plan will end the EPA. The next generation would be justified in looking back at us and asking, what were you thinking? Couldn't you hear what the scientists were saying? Couldn't you hear what Mother Nature was screaming at you? Powerful stuff. That was part of the trailer for the new film, an inconvenient sequel, Truth to Power, a follow-up to former Vice President Al Gore's documentary, of course, An Inconvenient Truth, the Oscar winner. A decade later and six months into the Trump presidency, we have witnessed a retreat in American leadership on climate change, including the president's decision to leave the Paris Climate Agreement. I'm joined now by the directors of the new film, Bonnie Cohen and John Schenck. I want to play a, a clip of the film that shows how local politics are leading the way to a clean energy economy. Let's watch that, guys. So how long have you been mayor? I have been mayor for two years. Currently, we're 90% renewable energy. We're getting our wind out of Amarillo. And when we go 100% renewable, we will be the largest city in the country that's renewable energy at 100%. Now, so I assume that the reason you did this is that the two of you are just rabid environmentalists. Well, not exactly, because um, you're in Georgetown, right. which is the reddest city yeah. in the reddest county in Texas, and I'm a conservative Republican. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, you know, our duty to our ratepayers is to provide them with the lowest possible utility cost. And money talks. But then doesn't it just make sense from a common sense standpoint? The less stuff you put in the air, the better it is. Yeah. I mean, common sense. I don't. You don't need scientists to debate. Can that. I use that line? You absolutely can. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard the former vice president use that line uh, <laughs> since then. I'd imagine, um, Bonnie, this when you set out, this was going to be a hopeful film. You were on the way to the Paris um, Climate Agreement, um, a huge accomplishment uh, for the United States of America and for the world. And then uh, a guy named uh, Donald Trump, the president of the United States, happened. I had that change things for you guys. You know, we did have to address it because, you know, the film really spends a lot of time in Paris and the real dr dramatic uh, head of the film is about the Paris Climate Accords and all of us agreeing to it and for the first time countries coming together uh, and agreeing to get to carbon neutrality by a certain point at the end of the century. So, and it's a very complicated process that took a huge amount of effort. So, of course, when, when Trump pulled out, it was tremendously devastating. We had to address it. We address it at the end of the film by acknowledging it uh, because it's important, but we also serve to acknowledge all the incredible work that we're doing, continuing to do here in the United States on a local and state level. You know, you see this mayor in, in the reddest city in Texas. Um, mayors, governors, ordinary American citizens are standing up and stood up in response to Trump's pullout, uh, which was really exciting for us to see. Yeah, John, I've seen uh former Vice President Gore's slideshow. It's continued to change um, over these past 10 years since the Inconven Inconvenient Truth uh, first came out. As consensus builds around this issue uh, of climate change, the particularly striking moment is when uh, everybody's naysaying the idea that Lower Manhattan, the World Trade Center yeah. site, can't be flooded, and then boom, Superstorm Sandy uh, happens, uh, and that exact uh, event occurs. With, with everybody agreeing around the world uh, now that climate change is an urgent threat, uh, other than, I guess, uh, the, the person in the White House, is, is there an audience of one for this film? You know, um, this film uh, is really amazing in that you see how, just how bad the climate crisis has gotten. Everybody around the world has recognized that. In fact, a lot of the film is made up of user-generated videos of people noticing things in their own backyards. Right. The storms are getting bigger, sea level is rising, droughts are more intense. But the really surprising thing for Bonnie and me, and I think that it, what makes it really hopeful for, for even people who care about the environment and know this issue, is just how close we are with renewable energy. The cost down curve of solar and wind and how it's gotten to be a real choice. In fact, it's now as cheap, if not cheaper, to get your energy from solar and wind as it is from burning coal. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. I've done a lot of reporting. I actually spent some time in eastern Kentucky, um, and they'll tell you that, uh, and, they, and they freely admit that, and they have to look for new jobs um, in, in that part of the country. Uh, Bonnie, part of the film is this moment when Al Gore goes and sees Donald Trump uh, in Trump Tower during the um, transition, and you guys are there um, as he goes up, and then as he comes down. Uh, what happened in that room? Uh, what did they talk about? 
You know, Al Gore is, um, having been the Vice President of the United States, he takes his relationships with sitting presidents very seriously. He keeps those con uh, conversations confidential. But afterwards, he did, he did tell us that, you know, he came out feeling somewhat optimistic that maybe there was about a 50-50 chance wow. that Donald Trump would stay in Paris. He thought he had made some headway, but uh, unfortunately, as Al likes to put it, he did not come to his senses about it. Yeah, what 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 um what happens now? What happens in the United States? You talked a little bit about this. We saw the clip of the mayor uh in Texas. Can the United States still meet the goals of the Paris climate agreement without the federal government leading the way, John? Absolutely. You know, in this film, you'll, I think audiences will be surprised. You're really meeting a post-political Al Gore. He's not involved in politics anymore. And climate change is quickly becoming a non-political issue for our country. <sighs> Most Americans in all 50 states agree that in man-made climate change, and they agree that something should be done about it. And we have the solution. So, yes, that's exactly what happened after Trump made this Paris announcement, is that you saw mayors. Uh, you know, uh, CEOs of companies, governors, the governor of California, the governor of Hawaii, and many other states have stepped up and said, hey, wait a minute. We disagree with our federal government on this issue. We want to stay in the Paris Accord because it helps our economy and it helps, by the way, save the future of human civilization on planet Earth. Is there something uh, that Al Gore could have said differently that Donald Trump could have done to remain in the Par Paris Climate Agreement uh, and still, uh, you know, met the goals of his base, the people that elected him that wanted him to pull out of this thing. I, you know, you'll have to talk to Al Gore about it, but from what we can glean from the conversations, he really went to bat. He spent a lot of time, he spent more than one meeting session with Donald Trump talking about the Paris Accord and all the complicated reasons why we should stay in it. And I think he really feels like he gave it everything he had and there was no sense of how President Trump uh, was going to respond. I have to say, it's, a, it's an absolutely fascinating film, not just because it brings um, the last 10 years into focus, but also because it's an inside look uh, at ultimately what happened when this this new man became the president of the United States and all of these 10 years of hard work uh, then, you know, uh, were called into question. You do a great job. I recommend everybody see it. The film's called An Inconvenient Sequel, Truth to Power. You can see it right now in some cities across America. It opens nationwide on Friday. Bonnie Cohen, John Shank, uh, thank you both very much. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. For hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.